Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. I'm going to continue with my game series today. Now, if you haven't been following along, I do suggest that you go back and watch the previous episodes. I am not doing any work outside of these episodes on this project, with except perhaps the occasional fix to um, CI build issues, basically. So we've gone through the plan, getting started, finding out as soon as possible, handling command line parameters, and reading our SFML joystick states. So if I do this, my joystick here, and I can press the various buttons and get feedback here about what's going on. Now this is a, um, what is this? This is a Logitech F310 gamepad. It's very very standard kind of thing emulates an Xbox controller if you're on Windows. Now um, uh, we're going to pick up where this left off and we're going to look at reading our keyboard states. And I know that there's still a lot to discuss in this code really um, because we're, we're building up these joystick states. And so I process all of the events and then I build up the new joystick state. And I pass this on. Now, I feel like we have one of two ways that we really need to go with this. One would be a joystick event occurred, therefore we load the current state of the joystick and we take action on it. The other would be if no joystick event occurred, or no, the other would be that we build an event for each event that occurs. Uh, we somehow let the programmer know that, oh, by the way, you've had 23 different joystick events in this particular game loop here. And honestly, I don't know which way is the better option. I'm going to leave this code as it is, but I do want to add a quick thing that is update joystick state. Now, actually, I, I wonder if this should be in the load joystick code, if this should just load the current state of the joystick. So the first time the joystick is ever found, load the current state. And then process events on top of that. That, that, that sounds reasonable. So let's see what it looks like to do this. Now this is giving us the set of all of the buttons and all their axes. So we can actually figure out how many buttons and um, which axis this has. Uh, I think for the moment we're going to not care about those things, but we do want to know what the access position is and is button pressed for all the possible buttons and access. Uh, yeah, I think we can do that. actually. Uh, unsigned int is going to be fine. It's always going to be the same size or smaller. And if I load that and I load that, then there's no type conversions. And if I do this and this, then that. There, now we have no conversions to worry about. Use the correct types. All right, that's not a strongly typed enum, but let's just go ahead and keep the types the same. 
Now at this point we start to wonder, maybe this should just become a part of the constructor for joystick. Um, maybe it should. I'm not sure. Maybe it should become part of the constructor for joystick. We're going to leave it as it is at the moment. And what? I'm getting warnings. Why? Why? Do not use subscript when the index is not an integer. Right. So um, I'm still going to ignore that at the moment. And then let's go ahead and do a couple of things here. We've got this state here that is based generically on a button count, but um, let's do it on the actual button count that this joystick has. And I'm actually really curious how that looks. Because I know this joystick doesn't have 32 buttons. All right, so this joystick has 10 buttons. Let's see if we can. Two, three, four, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait a minute. Huh. Uh, nope, I don't see any way to get how to get number eight to light up. Okay. So though we've got these axes, let's go ahead and get the axes displayed as well. Now, uh, so that's interesting because we've got potentially a lot of axes here. Let's just go ahead and push these out. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm moving my left analog stick. So that's the X axis. That's the Y axis. And this one is the up and down on my right analog stick, left and right on my right analog stick. This is my left trigger from negative 100 to positive 100. My right trigger. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that leaves this guy which is my directional arrows, um, my not analog stick gamepad. So yeah, I've got all eight axes in use, which is what it supports here. So it looks like we're getting um, pretty close to being able to read all the state of these things, which makes me think this episode is probably just going to end up stopping at choice stick events because I did promise you ultimately that I would have something that actually showed these buttons lit up. Um, I have no idea how consistent these buttons are. I'm guessing they're pretty consistent between these things. So actually, let's just try to name these. We're not going to get really fancy here, are we? Um, let's do an access to string here. Okay.
That's all legal, by the way. I can return those as a string view because const character literals are valid for the lifetime of the program. So no problem there. And then I want to do to string of this axis that should fail to compile. Yep. All right. Just making sure. Control reaches end of non void function. Yeah. So it's const expr function, which is valid. It returns string view, that's valid to do, but it's complaining at me because it thinks that it can reach the end of this non void function. I have, in fact, implemented all of the possible cases. So I am going to do this at the moment. I'm going to say just abort the program if we somehow receive an access that we should not, that doesn't exist. Right, let's see what this looks like. So left analog stick, right analog stick is U and V, R is the right trigger, that's reasonable, Z is the left trigger, and POV is the uh, digital gamepad. Could probably start giving these things names also because they are pretty standard on gamepads, I think, but um, we're going to pass on that for the moment. All right, so we're loading from the joystick. I am getting kind of annoyed with these text unformatted. Now I need to figure out a couple of things here and I need to start to clean this code up for real. So let's just go ahead and create a new um, whatever the keyboard shortcut is for this. I don't know. New C++ header file. What? No. Where's the configure button? Header extension is HPP. Thank you very much. Creating a new HPP file. And this is going to be called something like that. I'm going to add it to the game target automatically. It'll deal with that. I can add it to Git automatically. We're going to have to start dealing with some of these things. Yeah, that's not, that's not useful, but it's what we got at the moment. This is all in the SFML joystick header. Oh, wait, where is it? Yeah. of them on joystick. At HPP. No? All right, we're starting to get this a little bit organized. I think this should still work. Um, but I'm going to deal with this text unformatted. I'm using inline here to control linking, not for actual inlining of the function. I could just as easily I'll just make it static. I don't know. I need to use a namespace here of some sort. Um, it's kind of like Hamburger Helper.
So what I'm doing is I'm creating a um, helper for myself that will use the formatting routines from lib uh, format instead. That is my goal. It's all about not repeating ourselves here. We see that this pattern keeps coming up over and over again. So I'm going to do this text unformatted. And I'm going to pass it the result of calling format on the format string and I'm going to pass it all of these params however they were passed along to me and then I'm going to wonder why I'm getting a compile error That's the inline documentation. Let's include in GUI helpers. Oh, I didn't give it a return type. Hi. All right. Now what am I missing? And I forgot to expand that parameter pack. There we go. All right, one step at a time, we tried to make this all a little bit better. That is the goal of every pass that we take. And I hope that this isn't too much just watching someone program or something like that, but um, there we go. We've, we've managed to clean up a fair bit of our calls into MGUI, and we're using uh, libformat and all of its handiness. A little bit better output with our um, joystick. Let's go ahead and look at our keyboard input. So we've got our event again. We're going to go back to this from last week. And we see that we have a key event. The key can be pressed, the key can be released. All right, so it's a key code and then a modifier, alt, control, shift, or system key. I guess that's the Windows key on a Windows laptop. Let's go back into this process event. We're gonna end up with some sort of process event or event generator of some sort. But we build this up one day, one, one case at a time here and understand what's going on. Key event. No, not key event. It's key pressed. There we go. Oh, I don't think I need that this time. Actually, this one's interesting because there's not a whole lot for us to talk about. Now, you'll notice that the event here is for a single key. Where is the alt control shift or system key pressed when this key was pressed? So we absolutely have to use this, I think, because if we come down and we look at the keyboard, let's see, the keyboard, the keyboard lets us say, is a specific key pressed? And lets us show or hide a virtual keyboard. So is a specific key pressed? We have to go through all of these. Now, let's see. That's a fairly good number of uh, key codes in here. Key count. The total number of keyboard keys. So if you wanted to know if two different keys on the keyboard were pressed at the same time, you would have a hard way to know that. So I don't know how exactly we want to deal with these. 
Now, if we're keeping with the mentality of abstracting things a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap this up here. We've got our plan, our getting started, our finding errors as soon as possible. Uh, reading joystick states. And now, yes, I, I did. I did do this, and this is kind of what I did in the last episode. So let's go ahead and modify this real quick. So reading joystick states should, and then we've got another one that's more like displaying our joystick states. And we haven't gotten to the keyboard yet. The plan was to get to the keyboard in this episode, but things went a little bit longer than anticipate it again. So let's go ahead and I want to add another one actually in here. That is, um, how do we want to do this? We want to do something like uh, is that that's a poor, poor description at the moment. Let's see, what is this going to be? It's going to be something like uh, Logging game events? No, no, no. Um, I'm going to call it dealing with game events. That's going to be the next episode. So thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Um, let's come back to this because we, we definitely have to start to answer some questions here real soon, I think. And I'll get to those questions in the next episode. Thanks for watching.